Now let's take a minute to talk about Frank Frazetta's compositional elements. Mm. Here we have a standing warrior with a woman at his feet, a staple of fantasy paintings. But if you take a closer look, you'll notice how the figures in the ground form a triangle. Oh, it is a triangle. This composition can be found in many of Frazetta's works. He was a master of using the golden triangle composition. It's like Doritos. Yes, Robot, he was inspired by Doritos. You get an A+. Plus. <laughs> the thing about triangles is, is that they give you this dynamic movement in your paintings, you know, instead of having this static image, like a square. It's boring, it's static. Triangles, on the other hand, are exciting. Let's take a look at some of the other paintings with triangle composition. Here we got Conan saying, come at me, with his triangle composition. <laughs> We also have one dude trying to kill another dude with another chick down there, and their heads form a triangle. And also, it's got a snick composition. In the snick painting, we have more triangle compositions. Is this one triangle composition too? Absolutely. Check it out. Look at these characters. They form a triangle. Also, this woman and her cat. Triangle composition. Even Death Dealers got that triangle composition going on. Yeah. And you can see this method in many other paintings and photographs, such as the Mona Lisa and Raising the Flag over Iwo Jima. Of course, Frazetta is best known for his paintings, but he didn't actually get started painting until he was 30 years old. When he finally did pick up a paintbrush, he began creating realistically styled fantasy book covers and unleashed a hidden talent that would forever place his mark on art. Really? Really. He's like responsible for the whole sword and sorcery genre of art. Not kidding. Frazetta's cover for Conan the Adventurer, a 1966 collection of Weird Tales magazine stories, redefined the look of Robert E. Howard's Sumerian warrior, and truthfully, an entire genre. Howard's depiction was quite different, Frazetta recalled some 30 years later. He was leaner with tussled hair and hawkish features. I instead saw a bruised, battered, scarred monster of a guy. Countless Conan book covers followed, as well as covers for Burroughs books about John Carter and Tarzan. In the 70s, Frank Frazetta was creating mostly fantasy book covers, and any book that had one of his illustrations would sell so well that at one point, publishers came to him to ask what other paintings he had laying around in order to buy that painting from him and then have a writer write a story to go around that painting. That's nuts! Eventually, I plan on someone writing a novel to go with my fish monster drawing. That way, I don't have to write it myself and I can free myself up to become a professional dancer. All right. Frank's vision of Conan the Barbarian redefined the character and popularized him so much that there were a pair of movies made about him in the 1980s starring Arnold Schwarzenegger in which, ironically, Frank Frazetta did not illustrate the movie posters for. Why not? I don't know. One of history's biggest mistakes. The general blood and thunder vibe of Frazetta paintings pairs very well with heavy metal. Even though Frazetta himself wasn't much of a rock music fan, rock bands were definitely fans of him. Molly Hatchett introduced Frazetta to generations of headbangers when the band used his paintings for three of their album covers. He's equally beloved by filmmakers and screen legends. According to Frazetta's friend and diehard supporter, Doc Dave Winniewicz, Frank wouldn't leave his house to see anybody. So famous fans like Clint Eastwood, Sylvester Stallone, and Robert Rodriguez would fly to Florida to visit him. George Lucas even flew all the way out to meet him and reportedly was super nervous. Fun fact, the Slave Leia costume was inspired by one of Frank Frazetta's paintings called The Egyptian Queen. Oh, wow. Yeah. Love that Slave Leia. Don't we all? When are you gonna cosplay a Slave Leia? Never. It's done to death. And Frank didn't just work on comic books and movie posters. In the early 80s, he even collaborated on an animated feature film, Fire and Ice, with director Ralph Bakshi. And the Keepers of the Flame is about to begin. Fire and Ice. From the visual imagination of Ralph Bakshi and the dazzling artistry of Frank Frazetta, 